just look at the examples of these classifications of groups okay in the different organisms so in this case we shall have our our groups as we have called them we also call it the hierarchy system and if you know hierarchy it's about order okay from this to this to this to that so from So, we are starting with, of course, the human being. Man is, um, man belongs to a species we call sapiens, okay, then genus homo, okay, then family hominidae, then order primates, those are the mammals that have a, a better thinking capacity, okay, like uh, chimpanzees, bonobos, monkeys, they, they think better than dogs who are also mammals. So this is order primates. Now, more of those in order primates make up a part of the mammalia, you understand? Primates like chimpanzees, human beings, a part of mammalia, which consists of other organisms like goats, dogs, um, which other one? Which other mammal can we think of? buffaloes okay all those are mammals because they give birth to their young ones and then mammals are part of the ones we call chordates that have a, a this uh this these vertebral bones okay now uh, of course here in codata is where we find other nanny mammal chordates for example reptiles fish birds and amphibians now all those codets are part of a bigger kingdom which we call mammalia sorry animalia and in animalia we find very many animals like the insects like the starfish like the sponges like the tapeworms all of those are animals the kingdom we saw very many organisms like we have said the phylum has fewer then class even fewer order much fewer family fewer the more and the species the fewest okay i mean we are people who are part of a genus we call homo which genus is part of a family called hominidae which is part of an order called primates that involves all those apes then those all we apes and ape like things a part of a class which is mammals and all those mammals that we know are part of codets and codets are part of animals so that is the classification of a human being like you and me we can try of well, maybe maybe maize because it gives us corn doesn't it so let us try with maize maize is a plant belongs to kingdom Planting. Oh, important for us to note. All of this kingdom phylum class order up to genus start with a capital. It's only a species that does not start with a capital letter.
So maize are uh, is the real maize that we eat that's part of a genus we call Z of other plants that look like maize of family poesy of plants that look uh, that have those huge leaves that like that of maize then comedineus is the order and comedineus is part of what we call monocotyledony which involves all plants that have uh, that are monocotyledonous like rice like wheat okay then monocotyledonous plants are part of the ones we call angiospermatophyta or angiospermophyta which are the flowering plants now flowering plants are part of the kingdom plantae where we find all the plants including ferns mosses including maize and mangoes okay so that is maize and now we are going to look at two more others and this will be And so, here is the list of more of two more organisms that we have classified: a mushroom and a honey bee. The mushroom are these edible ones, okay? One of those edible mushrooms. So it's a fungus, and the, a honey bee is an animal. And so we have followed all the all the seven the seven orders. We have placed them in all the seven orders. Binomial system of nomenclature. Now, um, by and biology has to do with the two, okay, and the nomenclature with namings. So, binomial nomenclature refers to the system of giving organisms two names. Okay. Now, these two names are always derived from that organism's genus name and its species name. Okay. They always have, they always come from either Greek or Latin. And this system was, it was invented by a scientist who, whom we call Carl Linnaeus, who, um, who, who lived for a very short time from 1707 to 1777 not too long ago maybe too long ago but uh, he came up with a system of naming organisms two names I mean also for the most part we have two names one being your specific name and the other one being your the general name probably for your family if my name is maybe uh, Stella and maybe my family is called Chimuli okay our family name is Chimuli and then my name will be Stella Chimuli okay or Chimuli Stella the same applies even to organisms we give them two names to better identify them remember taxonomy has to do with naming classifying and identifying 
We have looked at the classifying, now we are looking at the naming. The rules are that you give every organism two names. Those names might be Greek or Latin and we always start with the genus name followed by the species name. We either underline them separately or if we are typing we type them when they are italicized in italics. You know those slanting letters? Yes, we type them in italics. The genus name always starts with a capital letter and the species name always starts with a small letter. Now let us give some of the examples of the organisms that we've just classified earlier. For example, we have said, we have talked about man, we have talked about honeybee, honeybee, we have talked about mushroom, and we have talked about maize. Now, what should be the name for man? He would be called Homo sapiens. Okay. Since I'm writing, I'm going to underline them separately. Capitalize small letters, underline, underline separately two names, which are the genus and species name. We said the honeybee is called Apis mellifera, so it will be Apis mellifera. Can you now come up with the one for the mushroom and the maize? Yes, the maize was called Z maize. I got for the mushroom. I'm sure we looked at it. Now, we have many others. For example, the housefly is called Musca domestica. Can you find more others? scientific names we call them scientific names of organisms maybe for the lion maybe for a cat mm -hmm. yes for example for the lion is felis leo so we go on naming them like that why is it important to classify organisms Why do you classify? I mean, why do you put your house in order? Why do you take spoons from the basins and put them in the kitchen? Why do you take stockings from the kitchen and put them in the wardrobe? Okay. Now, number one, we classify organisms to be able to, to name new organisms. So, new organisms can be easily classified because I find a new insect I've never seen before, but I know characteristics of insects. So I go and find all these insects look like this. Or, okay, I think it belongs to this, key, this, this order or class. Okay, so enables us to nail new organisms. I mean, if I find a new plant, that I have never seen before. I can use the, the, the different classifications around to be able to place it somewhere. Now, the use of scientific names enables or uh, prevents confusion among scientists. Okay, so we can have a universal name so that if I come to Uganda and I'm talking about Feliz Leo. The person in Brazil will understand that I'm talking about the lion, much as they don't understand my local language and I do not understand their local language either. But the universality comes because we use the same scientific name. Okay, so that is the importance number two. Number three, organisms belonging to the same group can be easily identified. So, it is easy to identify. I mean, 
if I see this animal that I have never seen and it is walking on its fours, it has fur. Before I think, and I'll not say, hmm, this is a plant. No, I will know, this is an animal. And if it is walking on its fours and it has ears, probably it's a mammal. Okay? If it has canines that are pointed, probably. I go on classifying because I already know the characteristics of organisms that look like the one I am classifying. And lastly, it is easier to study an organism since the members of the groups resemble. It is easier to study an organism. And so, those are the importances of classification. Now, we are going to go back to our kingdoms which you remember very well and we're going to start handling one at a time starting with kingdom monero <laughs>